front row. The Strickland GMC Pace Truck pulls off down the back stretch. Kyle McKenzie with double green flags in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. Let's end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. Bryce Miller takes the early lead, but here comes Jonathan Preston. He'll make a three wide with the Cobra. Wow. Well, that was close down there, Adam. Go ahead. Bold move by Jonathan Preston, shooting it up the middle. Chuck heaving a lead lap number one. Preston back to the point, but here comes the Cobra. He'll strike back, grabs a lead back, and we got trouble for Colton Gulick, but he'll get the car right. It yellow flag is out. Air, air on the side of caution. It looked like Gulick was like stop dead go file look at that the race leader is in turn three last place is in turn one we're going to be into lap traffic by lap three back to the green flag chuck heaving will bring us down the front stretch and into corner number one here comes parker bryce miller and jonathan preston back at it side by side for second Whoa, one way off the track and tumbling off the end of the back straightaway. That was Jonathan Preston. Jonathan. Up and over still upside down on the... Hay bales up there in corner number four is where the car rested. He hopped up over the berm in corner three and took a vicious ride. He is giving an inch. That's what we're here to see. Green flag, Chuck Heaving getting back on the loud pedal to start things once again, really down the front stretch. Here we go again. Parker Price Miller on the top, Heaving on the bottom, and Frantic keeping pace with them as well. Here comes Horseman up to fourth. Sam Haver deep looking to break into the top five in that blue and white number 15. And off the banking up in corner number three. Another car went off that time. It was Dustin Daggett. He'll lose a ton of real estate as right now it's the Cobra. Chuck Heaving leading over Parker Price Miller and Davey Frannick. Problems up there. That's Coleman Gulick up in turn two. And I believe he's going to take it pit side. That'll end his night. Gulick to the pits. We mentioned Dustin Daggett a minute ago. He's the only driver to make all 14 Canadian Sprint Car National features, but he's going to be one of the first cars in Chuck Ebing's sights here, as Ebing can already see the back of the field. We look at Dylan Westbrook going into turn one. He's about half a lap behind the leaders. He's running up on the outside. Looks to be keeping a fairly good pace, but out in front, Chuck Ebing having his way right now. Parker Price Miller hot on his heels. As I say, that Ebing bobbles in two. Down in corner number three, new leader, Parker Price Miller. They've got the lap car of Jared Horseman right in between them as the Cobra Chuck Heaving tries to sling down low. That nearly got close with Hunt Hort and Jared Horseman, but somehow the Cobra keeps pace with Parker Price Miller. I don't know how he did that. We've got one off. Is that Davey Frannick that just blew off the top of three? Yes, it was, and he gets it gathered back up. Allows Sam Aperteeth back by him. Wow. Price Miller just hit a big run down there in corner three. Kept it on all fours, though, as he tries to put a lap on Dustin Daggett. And this is where Parker Price Miller is going to have to fight with a pretty good car here. And look at Heaving right back on his tail end again. And Dustin Daggett's not going to lay over. Heaving looks to the inside to try to grab the lead. Here he comes down the front stretch, charges into corner one, diving down in deep, slides up in front of Miller. That won't work. Parker Bryce Miller continues to lead into corner three. And he knew that slider was going to work. You can kind of see the attitude of the car. He did not complete it. Alex Hill goes a lap down. Whoa, we got one way off in turn three and four up by the hay bales. I believe that's Mac. That's Mac to man. Back up front, it's still Parker Price Miller putting a lap on Corey Turner now. We're trying to, Ebing still keeping him in sight. And behind them, it's a long way back to Max Stambaugh in the third position. And Max Stambaugh right now is in the thick of some lap traffic and uh, kind of got a bit of a buffer back to him and Sam Haferteep, who has worked his way now inside the top five. Haferteep up inside the top five. 
but a long way behind in terms of real estate as Parker Brace Miller coming out of four and Haver Deep just coming out of two. The leaders have stretched away from the rest of the field. Now, Heaving still keeping the law firm in sight right now, not gaining too much, but not losing much either. Still a long way to go in this one. 13 laps in of a 35 lap race. And the traffic is getting heavy as we are under yellow. Debris, reports of debris in. I missed which corner it was. Two to go in the 14th annual Aero Express Canadian Sprint Car National supercharged by Nitro 54 Variety. Chuck heaving straight to the bottom of the racetrack trying to make a move. He'll lose some ground down the back straightaway. Parker Price Miller back to the outside and both ends of the racetrack. He previously ran the fastest lap of this race so far. The only driver under 14 seconds, but he's losing ground now to Parker Price Miller. Here comes Dylan Westbrook. He's making a charge to get himself into the top five as he works by Davey Frantic and now sets his sights on Sam Hayford Deep Jr. That 47 car just about twisted itself into a pretzel. Did you see him straighten it up out of turn four and the thing just pitched itself? Dylan Westbrook is on the charge. He's making big gains on Hayford Deep now as both of them race within the top five, fourth and fifth right now as Heaving has started to eat back into that lead that Parker Price Miller built up. Miller leads across the line, completing lap number 17. The Cobra Chuck Heaving in second, and it's Max Stambaugh, Sam Hayford, and Dylan Westbrook, your top five. The track you can see is starting to change. The speed of these race cars going into the turns, things are starting to change up. Who's gonna have the best long-term car? Long run car, rather. Ebing has tried a lot of different lines out of corner four, and that one out of corner two didn't work quite as well. He was really gaining on Parker Price Miller, and again gains off corner four as Parker Price Miller back into traffic again. But I like that Chuck Ebing is moving around the racetrack. He's tried his car in a number of different spots on the track, so he's building that database in his mind of where the car's going to work for him. And he is not losing a lot of ground, although as I say that, he's got a couple of lap cars between he and Parker Price Miller. He'll slide up in front of Jared Horseman and work down the backstretch with Miller already in corner three. Great battle for the fourth spot, third spot rather, just ahead of Dylan Westbrook. Or is that a lap car that uh, Hayford Deep just got? Oh, that is oh, Max Stambaugh right there. The lap car is Jared Horseman up just behind Chuck Heaving. Heaping got off of the end of corner four just a little bit, or sorry, corner three a couple laps ago and got back on the track without losing too much ground, but Parker Price Miller is ahead by it almost two seconds at the moment. 22 laps in, so next time by it'll be 12 laps to go. That's still a lot of racing here at the Big O, and traffic is going to be an issue for the rest of this race. Parker Price Miller out in front, and the Cobra Chuck Heaving and Sam Hayford team and Dylan Westbrook running similar lines, similar lap times. They are third and fourth. Mark Smith now has worked his way into the top five. Mark Smith, who started ahead of Dylan Westbrook. Oh, Westbrook's got a problem up in turn uh, four. Right rear flat on the 47X. The caution will fly. Oh, heads up there in corner four. Heartbreak for and, and on Mark the move Smith up now into that fourth position and uh, he's starting to make his presence known with 11 laps left to go we got a car Jeff Cook on the outside of corner number three is not going to fire and I believe we're going to have to go to the yellow flag and yes we will Sounds like there was contact between Jeff Cook and maybe Chris Steele. The front oh, wing on Cook's yeah. car is all mangled there. Let's get a look at Steele's car and see if there's any damage on him. And they got it back out. Fortunus for D Dub still on Westbrook. Got a lot of work to do though. Green flag is back out. 
Parker Bryce Miller shoots down the front stretch and into corner number one. Jeff Cook in that 10 car. That car did not launch there. Coming out of turn four, he's got his hands full. Parker Bryce Miller leads with 10 to go. Heaving is there again. Trying to go to the inside, can't make it work that time. And look at Haverty now up to third with Smith right next to him. Yeah, you got the Friday night winners duking it out for third and fourth right now. Haverty on the outside and a car oh. down the back stretch. Kyle Drum nearly got clobbered. He'll turn it down to the inside of corner number three and the caution flag flies again. Alex Hill and the 23 machine just snuck He's done. Up. He will not take his time in the work area. They'll tow him to the infield so we can keep on rolling. Back to the green flag. Parker Price Miller, Chuck Hebing, Sam Haferty, Mark Smith, and Jordan Thomas from back in 20th. That's your top five with now just nine laps left to settle it for 10 grand US dollars. Green flag in the air. Chuck Ebing's right rear wheel has got weight all over it. I wonder if he maybe clipped the wall at some point, but he's not letting that show as he goes after Parker Price Miller again for the lead. Man, he sailed the car in hard and he was able to get some bite. Chuck Ebing is learning lap after lap what that car is capable of. Sam Haber's even third. Not really able to keep pace right now with the top two. Great battle going on at the front. Parker Bryce Miller leads, but here comes the Cobra. Chuck Heaving. Oh, he hits the wall at corner number one with a left rear. The car will go around in front of the field. He does a 360, and it looks like he'll be able to stay going. And yes, we are going green, but will Heaving be able to pull it into the infield? Wow. What a turn of events. Chuck Heaving was putting on a show, and he is out of this one. And what a lead with five laps to go. Parker Price Miller with a significant lead over Sam Haverty. We talked about how that outside line can bite you when you're digging so hard. Well, that concrete wall can do the same, and it's done it for the Cobra. Chuck Heaving, Parker Price Miller out in front over Sam Haverty Jr. and Mark Smith. Jordan Thomas just jumped up to the fourth position, but he is just about out of laps. We got one more peeling off on the back stretch. That, I believe, is Max Stambaugh that went on. Max Demand will rejoin the field after an off-road excursion. Battle for second now. Smith and Haverty. As Smith tries to take that spot away, Parker Price Miller back into traffic now, but it might be too late for the rest of the field to catch him. Anything can happen here in the closing laps. Two laps to go. The law firm, Parker Price Miller, out in front. Working through lap traffic, a great battle for that second spot going on right now with Mark Smith and Sam Haverty. The winners on Friday night started back in row number five, but they've got their eyes set on Parker Price Miller and the red flag is out. Car on its side in corner two. Jordan Thomas on his side. Oh no. Cars being brought over to the entrance of corner number three. Crews will come out. They will be able to refuel and tire pressures only. Now, two laps to go. Could this change the complexion, though? How much fuel you put in? Tire pressure change. Could anything help at this point? As Parker Price Miller's been out in front, anything can happen on one of these restarts. I'm pretty sure it was. Or is. So those watching at home getting a good close up look here. Fuel and tire pressure only, and officials there keeping an eye on things to make sure that is the only thing happening. If you've been a sprint car fan for a while, you probably remember watching like old Knoxville Nationals from back in the late 80s and early 90s when. If it went red, they let them do basically anything they wanted to, and it got pretty crazy. And uh, so they added, we've added a few rules over the years about what you can and can't do during a red flag. Rules are challenging. 
White flag is out. That's what we've all wanted to see. And Parker Price Miller is two laps away from winning his second Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. The first coming back in 2016. So it'll be Parker Price Miller, Sam Hay for Team Junior, Mark Smith, Steve Poyer, Davey Franick, the top five. How about Mitch Brown? I believe he may be up there in the thick of things as well. Green flag flies. Parker Price Miller to the top, Sam Haver deep to the bottom. That's not going to work. Parker Price Miller stretches the advantage on Sam Hafer deep, and here comes the fireball out of nowhere to second. Steve Poirier on the last lap, battling to the inside of Hafer Deep for second. That allows Parker Price Miller to get away. Final time through corner number three. Court is in session and the law firm is ready to do business. Parker Price Miller wins his second career. Canadian Spring Car Nationals. Parker Price Miller becomes a two-time winner of the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. Poye second, Mark Smith third, Sam Hafer team junior comes home in fourth, Davey Franick fifth, sixth Scott Cruder, seventh Jordan Poye, great run for Mitch Brown up to eighth, Chris Steele ninth, and Jason Barney finds himself inside the top 10. Mobile fireworks lighting up the sky. The official firework provider of Oshweek and Speedway over on Highway 54 in Middleport. Check them out online on Facebook for all your fireworks celebration needs. Lone Wolf Fireworks, the official firework provider of Oshweek and Speedway. We see Poye, we see Smith just waiting for the winner. Parker Price Miller doing the donuts. In corner number three, we'll get him a push. And down to Lucas Oil Products. Victory Lane for the second time in his career. The first time in 2016 for the law firm Parker Price Miller. He'll get the push down to the pad and get ready to celebrate. The Hills Racing Team. <laughs> Parker Price Millers. Still needing to get to the scales. Before we can send it down to Lucas Oil Products Victory Lane and talk with Parker Price Miller. Race fans, this is not his first rodeo. Parker Price Miller celebrates the top. The town line variety number. Oh, man, my, I think I had a heart attack those last five laps. I, mean, I, I didn't want to see that yellow come out. Uh, you can watch the scoreboard, and I, I don't like doing it, but uh, I noticed the 67 would come up on the board, and no, no other numbers would come up on the board and as I passed it. So I knew I had a big lead, and that yellow came out, and I was like, it's just not meant to be. You know, I haven't won a race yet this year. And, Man, what a what a time for it to be here at Oshawa for the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. I, I, he's been strong all weekend, you know, and uh, he got a good start. And we were just a little too tight at the beginning, but I knew we were going to be good later. And uh, man, my car just came on so strong. Uh, I can't thank Miles Hill, uh, Pam, Alex, uh, Trevor, Cam, Kent. You know, uh, everyone that makes this happen, and uh, you know, everyone. I, I can't thank you enough. No, uh, had a few words over on the back straightaway. Some lap cars want to race you, but uh, you know they're laughing about it. That's just not how I race, and uh, 
I don't appreciate. And uh, on long run, the, the line I was running, I had car the, the car car running inside were crossing in front of me, so I was struggling a little bit about about that. And my tires on long run seems the, the car and tire were not working. But on short run, with all those restarts at the end, they really played in our favor. How happy are you with a second place run? I know you're here to win. You always want to win, but that's got to feel good. You drove hard for that. Yeah, that was a hard fought battle starting from 12 and after last year. So that's a good rebound for us. I'm really happy. Congratulations to Parker Price, a really nice and gentleman driver. So I'm really happy of my weekend. No, you're never satisfied with running third. But, uh, uh, you know, we had a slow start there at the beginning. We actually fell back, I don't know, maybe 11th or 12th. And uh, once the car got going, we got really good there and started coming up through. And then... Uh, kept having those restarts and it, some of them helped me but uh, the last two laps I needed a little bit longer run to keep it going because uh, I was better after about three or four laps and then I could really get hit my lines real nice and uh, I'd get a little too tight when it was a short run but uh, it, all in all it was pretty good we didn't have anything fall off a break this time or get run over so um, I call that a plus. The top three celebrating down there Lucas Oil Products victory lane so that will conclude our night of Racing here, thank you for being a part of the 14th Annual Aero Express Canadian Sprint Car National Supercharged by Nitro 54 Variety. And uh, thank you to the fans that were here tonight. Fantastic crowd, thanks. Adam Ross, Clinton Jeffrey, my name's Greg Kelman saying so long. We'll see you back here at the Big O in 2019.